The modern world has been shaped by science. We're surrounded by its fruits. Our futures will be determined by its discoveries. But how has it developed? How does scientific curiosity relate to the kinds of religious curiosity that have driven and motivated human beings for tens of thousands of years? If we look at the exterior of scientific buildings from two centuries ago, we can sometimes see traces of symbols and inscriptions linking them to a long tradition of spiritual and religious motivation. How far back is it possible to trace that connection? There is evidence of religious practices from a hundred thousand years ago. It is, though, in the cave paintings from about thirty thousand years ago that we first get a glimpse into the minds of our ancestors. Sixteen years ago, the Professor of Nanomaterials at Oxford University, Andrew Briggs, and the artist Roger Wagner teamed up together to explore the connections and entanglements of two different kinds of curiosity. Each bringing their different perspectives, they set out to trace an extraordinary story that runs all the way from cave painting to quantum physics. It's evident that the great painted complexes of Altamira, of Lasca and Chauvet must have involved enormous human resources of time and energy in their creation. So that we must assume that they were of central importance to the life of the communities that produced them. Throughout human history, communities have invested vast resources in religious artifacts and constructions, from Altamira to the ziggurats, from the pyramids to Stonehenge, from caves to cathedrals. We may have different opinions about why they've invested so much time and energy in making these things, but we can all agree that they have. It seems unlikely that prehistoric communities would devote resources to studying and observing the natural world simply for the sake of it. But could such observations be stimulated and carried along by the kind of presumably religious motivations that led people to make these images deep underground? You can think of it as being like a slipstream. When birds fly in a V formation, or Tour de France cyclists ride in a peloton, the movement of the air means that they don't have to work as hard as the one in front. They get a free ride in the slipstream. Human beings seem to reach out beyond the horizon of the visible world in order to try and make sense of it as a whole. You could describe it as ultimate curiosity. If then our curiosity about the world around us moves, as it were, in the slipstream, of that ultimate curiosity. You could describe it as penultimate curiosity. <laughs>